Hi there, we're Van Trekking Lifestyle, and in this week's episode, we get to be camping. I'm gonna let the sun shine in today. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my arms give out. I'm gonna let the sun shine in today. But on our way to our campsite, we did something that took the inside of our van from looking like this to this. And the back of the van went from this to this. <laughs> Everything's in here. We're all hooked up. This is a very lightweight trailer. It weighs 775 pounds. Looks good in here. We did it. We're gonna head on to the next place we're gonna stop. Pretty special place. It is. Takes me back to my childhood. Leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking. Your destination is on the left. Well, it's been a heck of a day for us so far. Wind's inside our second destination for the day and the next to the last stop before we actually get to our campground. We're at Tony's Ice Cream and Diner in Gastonia, North Carolina. And this is a place that brings back so many memories for me. My grandparents, who I used to go stay with every Friday and Saturday night from the time I was, I, I guess I was in diapers, I was really small, but I used to go stay with them and one of the treats of doing that was they would bring us to Tony's Ice Cream and we would get ice cream. This place is pretty special to me and I know it's also pretty special to a lot of other people who grew up in Gaston County and this place man it brings back so many memories to sit here and just think about coming to this place with my grandparents such a such an awesome thing really really glad i'm here and we will uh, enjoy this little picnic we're getting ready to have for sure here comes happiness <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think it's as good, good as, as I remember. It was for me too. Pretty full though. It's a big milk shop. So like I was telling, like I was telling you, it's a place that you just. I know for you, you probably have to have places like that. That in your childhood you went there, and hopefully they're still in business. Tony's has been in business since 1915. Next stop for us, Kings Mountain State Park. I'm gonna shut up talking so we can go get to the oh, campground. Loves to go fast on the bikes. Wow. Having fun? I'm having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Love the bikes. It's a lot of fun riding through the park looking for this. I York know. Lake. We've ridden everywhere. We made it all the way to the national uh, park part. The military. Of this, the military national park, and then it was closed because of COVID nineteen. This is open, but this is a looks like a pretty uh, small little creek that goes into a lake. Looks like this is the only place we can go to get on the lake. But from the map, knows. it looks like that. We're having a blast though, just with the bikes. Yeah, so, right? it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
that was the right thing to do. Wish you'd done that two years ago, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. <laughs> cool. All right, we're going to see if we can make our way back over to the campsite. This has been a pretty good first day. We almost sat down in the chairs and said, let's just go duh. But we yeah. decided to get out. I'm glad we did. Yeah, you? me too. Me too. It's worth it. All right, make it back. We ordered a new table so we could grill on it. One of the advantages of it is it makes a small little picnic table that we can put inside of the room. We're all set up, no bugs. Well, last year before COVID-19 hit and we went on our last trip, we ordered something else for our clamshell room. These covers. Look at this, this is cool. It provides a lot of privacy, which we like a lot. Okay. So it has four uh, Velcro strips that Velcro from both sides, the inside and the outside, and then the flap rolls over it. And then it also connects at all four corners. With little clips. Yeah. So it kind of pulls it tight, so you know it's not going to flap around. And it's awesome. Pretty neat. The, like uh, the, window, co the window covering rolls up. So and then also velcros in place as well. So it velcros here, here. Pretty neat. And we're getting ready to go explore this little village. To be home, passing by those little towns I know so well. Stopping for gas, and then I'm behind the wheel again. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse, where every mile is a new beginning, and every bend holds a new end. Eyes on the road, don't lose control. I'm speeding fast to chase my soul. I'm Chilled out, but she is looking forward to squirrels. What squirrel gonna Tonight for dinner, a really simple meal on the griddle and we're actually camping tonight. Lemon pepper chicken. Man, it's awesome. It's a simple recipe. I'll show you how to do that. First thing you have to do, chicken works better on the griddle when it's the same thickness all around. So you have to pound the chicken down to be about the same thickness. We have five chicken breasts here that we're gonna do this to. Then we'll get to griddling. You may recognize this as a uh, Michelob Ultra beer bottle. Uh, that's an adult beverage, by the way. We may not travel with a uh, rolling pin or one of those little fancy schmancy uh, hammers that you can... Meat, you can that's a meat tenderizer. A meat tenderizer, yeah. <laughs> we may not travel with one of those, but the bottom of this has texture to it. And if Lynn is with us in the van, I'm almost certain I have one of these empty in the van, right? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and now the next step is to put a little bit of avocado oil and salt and pepper on these and then we'll put them on the grill. Put a little avocado oil on the chicken breast. Move it over to there. A little pepper, a little salt, kosher salt. 
hit it with a little bit of lemon juice while it's sitting there just so it can get used to lemon juice and then we do the same thing again So the trick is to get the griddle just as hot as you can get it. If you put your hand on it and you don't have a hand anymore, it's hot enough. Listen to this. You That's like that sizzle, don't you? You ought to get it. You gotta listen for that sizzle. You wanna char both these sides. It smells good already. One thing I've learned from doing this is there's never really a good place to put the spatula. But on the 17 inch Blackstone griddle, the little container that holds the uh, grease, if it's clean, you can put it out a little bit and rest the spatula there. That's smart thinking out there, I'll tell you what. Looking good. <laughs> it's one of those meals where you don't really have to babysit it too much. It's a great meal for being out in nature like this. Flip it over, let it stay there for three or four minutes, flip it over again. When I flip them next time, I'll put the lemon and more uh, pepper and salt to it, but right now the other side is just getting a little griddle love. Later we're going to tell you guys about what we're thinking about, about to be. I have something else to be thankful for right now, and that is it's awfully easy to be able to griddle without those stupid green bottles. That hose and adapter that I bought to be able to use the quick connect, I don't think I'm ever going back to the green bottles again. Mm -hmm. I've had some loves, time to flip them and see if they're okay. They look good. That was the last one that I flipped, so I'm gonna flip them first. Okay. Wow, all right, so these two are going back over. Let me show you a secret. These guys didn't get the char as much as I wanted them to because there's too much oil on the griddle. So we're going to take some of the oil. Let's just get rid of some of that. And now let's take one paper towel. You can't cook on a griddle without paper towel. So we've got a really hot griddle. Now when we put these guys on there. We're gonna put some pepper. We're camping. We're not gonna cut up real lemons right now. If you're at home you can do that, but for here, if you just get lemon juice from concentrate, it's gonna taste the same, just trust me. It'll be good. But that's it for a minute. We'll come back and flip them over, repeat that process, and we'll be eating. In the meantime, my sweet wife is going to get the side items ready to go. Minus an eyebrow, sounding like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, how's my part of the meal doing? That looks like that's gonna be a great dinner for my part. Let's go cut one open and see what it looks like. By the way, if this looks like a lot of chicken for two people, it is. We're gonna make chicken rice bowls tomorrow as we go out on the paddle boards. So this is just part of this for tonight's dinner. And now, let's see what it tastes like. You wanna try the chicken? Getting ready. Right, Here we it go. Is. It's gonna be hard to do a happy dance sitting down. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. Let's see. see what that looks like. Perfect. He picked me a good little bite here.
<laughs> that is awesome. If you make it, let us know. You guys are already doing that. We appreciate it. This is one spicy, zesty piece of chicken. Lynn made asparagus and rice to go with it. Tell you what, griddle me this. What's the best chicken you can make on the griddle? I believe it's lemon pepper chicken. Every now and then throw a little butter and garlic on it just to make it feel a little extra special. But just lemon and pepper and a little salt, really hard to beat that. We're gonna get to eating. We're glad you're here. Meet us around the griddle next time and we'll show you another recipe. It's always good to get my sweetheart's reaction to the first bite. Yum, it's you good. Oh, here. Mm, there you go. All right. <laughs>Tonight we're enjoying a bug-free, cool little night sitting outside reading books and just being still. So what are you thinking we're going to do tomorrow? Hopefully we can get out on the lake.
perfect way to uh, top off this little trip to Kings Mountain State Park. So come to the water where you will find peace. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. This feels good, mommy. <laughs> you should try it. it feel good? <laughs> oh man. That feel good. So here I am sitting on the bumper of our new trailer. So far we're liking that. I'm sure we're going to get questions about it, but for now we haven't because this is the first time you're seeing it. Last week we had part of the episode where I had the conversation with my redneck twin. Many of you asked questions about that, specifically Roads of Life, who always leave the best comments, wanted to know if that's a specific thing you do inside a Final Cut. Well, it can be done with any editor. You, you just need to, as I did there, I created right down the middle of the couch, there was a scene. So then I brought both of those clips into the timeline on Final Cut. And on the clip that had me sitting on the left, I just simply cropped out the part on the right and vice versa on the other side. And you can't see it, but in each one of those sides was sitting Lynn, who was acting like she was me and doing my part of the skit that I was gonna be bantering back and forth. And that way I could kind of keep the timing. It's a great technique and you can do it with any editor. And we really uh, enjoyed putting that in there. Some of you made some really funny comments about it. I'm glad it was helpful. It was our kind of sarcastic way of saying, it takes common sense to go camping right now. So Sharon H, you're always so positive in commenting on our channel and we really think the world of you. Ask, could you give us a little more information about this new screen door that we created that is a really cheap version, well, really inexpensive version of the row left door. So we'll do our best to do that right now. But now that we've used it in a camping trip, I would never, ever go back to the way it was. Lynn's gonna come up and show you what she did and how she cut this. Hi, Sharon. First of all, we ordered a cheap screen. I think it was less than $30 from Amazon. Of course, it was too big and too long for the door. So you can see that it has binding on the sides and on the bottom and actually all at the top also. So what I had to do is I took the binding off everywhere on the sides and on the bottom, everywhere except the top and then, of course, in the middle. So then we had to I actually measured this side first because we wanted the opening to be in the middle. So Owen helped me with that. So we put it up on the top and we actually had to change our shelf that we have inside to be a wooden shelf so we could actually put the Velcro and pins in the top of it, which Owen did the, the wooden shelf. So I had to take all the binding off the sides and off the bottom, which if you've ever done that, and I'm no seamstress, you have to get one of those little seam pullers and pull it all out. We cut the sides. And then with a, we used a, um, actually a cutting board for sewing and one of those little mm -hmm. rotary scissor things. So El Owen was a big help with that. And I sewed this back on. And once we put this side back on, we measured the bottom and we measured this side to make sure that it was gonna be perfect. And one of the things too that you might wanna be aware of is that there are magnets in the, in the middle of it and at the very bottom, I made sure that I put the extra magnet in here at the very bottom so you'd have that little bottom piece that actually clung together and stayed. And one of the together. cool things about that is, since they're there, when you open up this, you can pull it over here and it'll stick to the door and you can load groceries and other things and then let go. Sometimes you kind of have to help it. <laughs> And then boom, there you go. There you go. I hope that answered your question. If you need any more information, just let us know. We'll be glad to explain it further. So Karen Hicks asked, what's the size of your clamshell? We've been looking at them and they come in various sizes. So today we're gonna measure that for you and show you that. 
So here we go, Karen. We'll measure this for you from side to side. Thanks. So it's 117 inches wide, almost 10 feet wide. And then from here to here, it's 104 from the front door to the back of the tent. But we really love it. We've spent a lot of time out here we have. during this trip. There have been bugs, so we've been able to put the screen up and it's just been awesome. Today we'd like to talk with you about the word to be. It's something we've had to learn on this camping trip we just completed. Not to be in the sense of the way Shakespeare would say to be. I think he meant something totally different that was a little deeper than what we're thinking about. So what we're talking about is what we've had to relearn during this recent camping trip in our van. We've had to relearn how to just, well, to be. Yeah. To be okay with things being quiet. To be okay with no internet to be okay being around other people because quite honestly, when we're at our home, we're not around people. We've had to learn how to, to be still and to be okay with not so epic camping spots, yeah. to be okay with just sitting around and reading. And just to be okay with being us. Come to think of it, maybe it is a lot like Mr. Shakespeare was thinking after all. If you don't get caught up in what you're missing out on or what you're not getting done back home, Sometimes the best part of the day is the part of the day that you get to just be. In this world we're living in now, it's a little different, isn't it? It's a lot like, well, it was for our ancestors. And we all could learn a little more about how to be. To be helpful. To be happy. To be grateful. To be curious. To be humble. To be thankful. To be honest to be trustworthy. And to be fair with how we treat each human who comes in contact with us. No matter their race, no matter their hair color, no matter their eye color, no matter what kind of camper they're in, just be respectful of that person. Because after all, they're on their own little journey to learn how to be. A word of warning. If you're afraid of snakes or you don't like seeing snakes, say goodbye now. But in our look at nature, we'd like to introduce you to one of our neighbors, a black rat snake that lives in a tree right above our home. He fell down the the tree. He's fun to watch unless you're one of the birds that he's trying to terrorize. Every creature in nature has a place, and we're very, very grateful that this guy lives in a tree right in front of our front porch. Thanks for being part of our journey. We'll see you again next week.